got some, I got some studs in, in the. <laughs> he started trotting them out, and the Lord said, this is not it. He didn't even call him a hymn. He said, this is not it. They all wouldn't flow. This is not seven times. This is not it. And Samuel, he, he's just flabbergasted. He said, well, I, I thought God told me to come over here to anoint one of your sons, but he's saying they're not it. And he, I think he turned to walk away, and he, he looked back at Jesse and said, you don't have any more sons? He said, well, I got one, but he don't really count. And when your own daddy thinks you don't count, that's where God picks you up. That's right. Well, send for him. Go get him. Bring him over here. He comes in. He's just a kid. He holds that horn of oil over his head, and all of a sudden the oil is released, and it starts to flow. This is he, God said. This is he. Why? It was his time. It was his time. Out of that anointing, he later killed Goliath. <laughs> but nobody had ever heard of him. Why? He was a secret weapon of God. Elijah. Elijah was like John the Baptist. He came out of nowhere, just breathing fire and blowing smoke and just preaching up a blue fog, you know? He was just, just angry at the devil. Confronted Ahab and Jezebel, called fire down from heaven, called, said, it's not going to rain till I say so, and it didn't. Three and a half years later, he said, now it can rain, and, and, and it did. came a gully washer. So this man came from nowhere. He, got, he was not on Satan's radar. But boy, did he make a difference. God raised him up and set him in the game when it was his time. That's how God works. Moses. Moses had disqualified himself because he killed an Egyptian taskmaster. And he ran for his life and for 40 years. He was 40 years old when he killed that guy. And for, for the next 40 years, he was out in the middle of nowhere. Matter of fact, he was on the back side of nowhere. Over in Midian. Tending sheep for his father-in-law. Had married a Midianite woman. Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> Moses was Jewish. I mean, he wasn't real white, but he was sort of white. made Miriam his older sister, man. Who do you think you are? You're the only one God speaks to. God said, okay, you don't like black? Let's try white. And she all of a sudden got leprous. You know, if you know anything about leprous, it turns your skin. It, it, you look like you've been bleached. And he said, you're not going to get well until Moses prays for you. And Moses prayed for her and she got well. What is God saying? I make the choices you don't. And if I see treasure, it's a treasure. She saved his life. Zipporah, his wife, saved Moses' life because he had not circumcised his son and that circumcision was a part of the Jewish covenant. And she took a sharp rock and circumcised circumcised their son. She wasn't even Jewish. <laughs> and it saved Moses' life. You know why? Because she's one of God's secret weapons. That's who she was. And Moses was too. Out on the backside of nowhere, sees a burning bush, God starts talking to him and sends him right back where he came from and said, now it's time. One time, 40 years ago, now it's time. Moses lived another 40 years. He, he had three 40s, 40, 40, 40. He was 120 years old when he went from here. Third dimension, first, second, third dimension. He lived to the full. For 40 years, he led the children of Israel. 
But when he took the reins of leadership, he was nobody. God just hid him for 40 years and then pulled him out of the closet and set him on his track. You don't know what God's going to say through you or use you to do or be. You don't know. It's not up to you. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. You belong to God. If you stay open, stay pliable, God will use you in his time. It may just be one word. Let me give you another example. There was a guy over in Damascus, Syria. And, and, and Saul... Before he was ever Paul, Saul was riding with some other guys down the old dusty road on his way to Damascus, Syria. And this great light shined out of heaven, so bright and so powerful, it, he just fell right off that donkey onto the dusty road and was blinded by the light. And a voice started speaking. Now the other guys that were with him, the Bible says they thought it was thundering. But Paul understood what was being said. Saul, Saul, it's hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Who art thou? I am Jesus whom thou crucified. Who, whom thou uh, persecuted. What? Persecuted. I'm Jesus whom thou persecuted. What will you have me to do, Lord? He's blind. Just Get up, go over to Straight Street. You know why? Because he's going to be straightened out. <laughs> go over to Straight Street and wait, and I'll send somebody over there to pray for you and get your eyes healed, and then I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. Three-fourths of your New Testament is written by that guy that got picked up off that dusty road. Why? Because God had a secret weapon over in Damascus. His name was Ananias. Nobody had ever heard from him. He's not the, the Ananias that was married to Sapphira. Ananias, and, no, this is a different guy. His name was Ananias, and God spoke to him and said, now, now Saul is over on Straight Street. You go over there, you lay your hands on him and pray for him. I'm going to fill him with the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to tell him what he's supposed to do. And I'm going to heal his eyes. He said, Lord, I can't do that. This man's a killer. He's been killing Christians. God said, just do what I told you. It's your time. So he gets up, goes over there, and says, Brother Saul, <laughs> the Lord sent me here to pray for you that you may be healed and receive the Spirit, for you are a chosen vessel unto him. He prayed for him. The Bible says great scales or scabs fell off of his eyes and he was healed. His eyes were healed. He was filled with the Spirit of God and God said, you are a chosen vessel and I have things for you to do. You don't ever hear anything about Ananias after that. Doesn't mean he didn't do things, but you don't hear him. That was what he was born for. Paul goes on over to Arabia and was three and a half years in Arabia. Just him and God. That's why when he came out of that wilderness, he was no longer Saul, he was Paul. He was breathing fire and blowing smoke. Boy, he was one of the greatest apostles ever. But because of a little unknown jack leg, that just rose up when God called his number and did what God told him to do. There are a lot of divine operatives around. We don't know them yet, but we're in a season where they're going to start popping up like popcorn. And you're going to say, oh, that was of God. That was of God. You know, a good cook will cook something slow, maybe overnight, maybe two or three days, I don't know. But it'll be a long time in the making. Why? 
Because time is not the issue. The results is the issue. A good cook will take the time and the effort and the expense to put the substance in there so that when it's unveiled, it's ready. And it's good, as they say in the South. God's cooking some, some good meals. He's marinating some people in the secret place. He's saying it's not your time. Just, just stay over here. I'll tell you when to go. They're all around us. Some of them are sitting right here. That's going to make a difference in their generation. Going to make a difference in what's going on in the devil's dark. Habakkuk, the prophet. I'm going to turn over there right quick and read you what Habakkuk said. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievances? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are those that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen in regard and wonder marvelously. God said for I will do a work in your days which you will not believe. Though it be told you. But this prophet had been waiting. Why don't you answer me, God? Why don't you show me something? Why don't you why don't you do something, God? All I see is probably what you see on the newscasts. Probably what you hear from your neighbors. Probably what's going on in this nation and around this world. The stupidity. You can choose what gender you want to be. Oh, please. You can, you can, you know, you, 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 a man can have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> On what planet? Right. Exactly. Some of the junk that's being even taught in our schools and some of the ignorance didn't have nothing on us when he was saying how long oh Lord some of you have said it how long are we going to have to put up with this God how long are we going to have to see this kind of stuff God won't you do something God God said to Moses I have heard the cries of my children and I have come down to deliver them Come now, therefore, and I will send thee. <laughs> God's answer is sometimes us. That's right. That's right. Sometimes God's answer is us. Jesus, this, I started reading with Isaiah quoting what Jesus had, was to say about being hidden in the quiver of God. He's made my mouth a sharp sword and he's made me a sharp tipped arrow in the quiver of my God, my Father. Let me just give you a little insight as to what is involved in making an arrow. Much investment and time and effort and patience and much expertise is involved in making an arrow. First thing is you've got to make the selection of which tree limb you're going to use. You've got to choose the right branch. It's got to be the right stuff. And it takes an expert to know what to choose. 
The second thing is it has to be pruned. There has to be a cutting away of ugly deformities, the knots and the lumps and the twists and the turns. All that's got to be pruned away. The third step is that hat, that piece of wood has to be soaked in a solution that will soften it and make it bendable and pliable. And then the fourth step is to dry it, but you put it in a mold, a straight mold that will take all the bends and the kinks out of it and let it dry in that mold so it will be straight and it will be a seasoned piece of wood. The fifth step is it has to be sanded. you got to sand it, which is, is like a sanctifying of the small imperfections that are still left in it. you got to smooth those, those imperfections out. The sixth thing is it has to be fletched. The fletch is to put the arrow, uh, the feathers on the arrow. That's called fletching. And the expert takes the feathers from the same side of the bird. You don't take feathers from all over the bird. You take feathers from one side because they have to be compatible and comparable. And you fletch the rows of, arrow, of, of uh, feathers in the arrow so that it will fly aerodynamically and stay straight and true. The next thing is, the seventh thing, it has to be tipped. That means you've got to choose the right arrowhead. You've got to sharpen it and resharpen it and then sharpen it some more. And you have to bond it as the perfect head for that particular arrow so that it will add balance to that arrow. The eighth thing is it has to be crested. That means an expert will stamp his seal or carve or somehow make that arrow have a mark on it that identifies it as his arrow. The ninth thing is the notching. That arrow has to be notched on the very end where the feathers are is a notch that the bow string will fit into. It has to be strong and reinforced and it has to be at the right depth and it has to be at the right width so that when that arrow is pulled back it will in that notch receive the, the, the launching force and the power that that bow has to send it on its mission. And finally, the tenth thing is the polishing of the arrow. The polishing is to smooth it out and make it so wind resistant and slipping through the wind that it will have no resistance when it is sent on its mission. Jesus said, my father hath kept me hidden so that he could make me an arrow in his quiver. And boy, when God turned Jesus loose, he was awesome. What was God doing in Jesus from the age of birth to the age of 12? And what was he doing in Jesus from the age of 12 to the age of 30? We don't know. But whatever it was, it sure did work. It made him a sharp arrow, and he fulfilled his mission. And because he did, guess what? It set you free. Thank you. God's got a lot of arrows in his quiver. He's got some more Moseses. He's got some more Davids. He's got some more Esthers and Marys. Mary's 14 years old when God said, It's your time, Mary. You found favor with me. Now something's going to happen in you that has never happened before and it'll never happen again. You're going to give birth to my baby, my child, and no man's going to be involved. Wow. What an awesome
thing for a little 14 year old virgin to be told that God has taken pleasure in her. You know what she said? So be it unto me according to thy word. Wow. There are more Marys. There are more Ananiases and Zipporahs. There are more Nathans and Noahs. There are more Daniels. There are more Pauls. They're just waiting to be tapped and set loose. They are preparing. They are being seasoned. They are being sharpened. They, are, they have been selected. They are being pruned. They are being sanctified. They, they've been soaked and saturated in the presence of God. They have, they have been made aerodynamic missiles. And when they are released, it's going to make a difference in their generation. It's coming. Mm -hmm. There's never been a better time for this kind of release. All of the debauchery, all of the ugliness, all of the stupidity, all of the evil and the wickedness and iniquity that is going on around us. It's time for God to look at those secret weapons and say, go, go. And when they go, they will go with the anointing of God to make a difference. See, an arrow is a long-range weapon. It's not an eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose, fist to fist weapon. It's a long, it is released and sent on a mission. And the archer trusts that that arrow will hit the bullseye when he sends it. Why? Because he made it, he's prepared it, he's taken the time, he's hidden it in the, in the quiver until it's time for it to be released. Arrows are not designed just to go out and, and shoot up and just enjoy their flight and just, just uh, have them to go over. Which arrows are sent on a mission of purpose and there is a target every time. Precision, time released, armed and dangerous with piercing truth. You see, there's a reason why the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, even to the intentions of the heart. Mm -hmm. This word is piercing, and when this truth is in this secret weapon that's about to be released, it's going to go with a piercing truth that is going to make a difference. There are going to be some people that are going to be called up to speak prophetically under the unction of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be some people that are going to be called up to write. Somebody wrote. Many authors wrote these books. Los Biblos, the books, the books within the book. Somebody wrote it. Somebody was moved upon by the Holy Spirit to write. Do you think those days are gone? Oh, no. There are people who are going to write books. There are people who are going to write articles. There are people who are going to write uh, 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 papers and, 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 and I don't know all the things that can be written, but I want to tell you, there's an anointing to do it, a scribe anointing, and there's a prophet anointing, and God gives it. I told you at the beginning of this year, and those of you who were here to, to hear it, you will remember this. Last year I told you that that year was the year of uh, resurrection, restoration, and recompense. And it turned out to be so. This year, when this first of the year, and I don't make these things up. I don't sit around wondering what can be our, our emphasis this year. No, no, no. God speaks to me. And this year, God spoke to me and said, this is the year 
of manifestation. Trust me when I tell you. Romans chapter 8 says, The earth groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. Never been a greater time for the manifestation of God's hidden weapons, his sons and daughters, to come to the forefront, stand forth, and speak with the anointing, and do and be what they were made to be. Seek God. Let God touch your heart. You may not ever know what God has hidden you for. You may not ever know. He may not ever tell you. But someday a door's going to open or a path is going to cross or somehow something's going to going to click in you and you'll just do it. You, you, you don't even know why you're doing it. You'll say it. You'll be it. You'll go there. Why? Because it's what God's been hiding you for. It's coming. Any honest hearted person that loves God and wants to serve him is a candidate to be one of these arrows. So there are some people that, that are going to hear this because this is going out from this room. There's some people that's going to hear what I'm saying today and they're going to say, I wondered why I've been so out of pocket, out of, out of circulation, out of the loop, just hidden, tucked away, not recognized, not, not, not uh, 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 felt like I was released or sent or anything. But I want to tell you, God's speaking to you now. Hear Him. Hear the Spirit's call. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every ear that is listening. I thank you for every person that is honest-hearted and sincere with you, sir, today. I thank you, Lord, that you have called us, you have prepared us, and you are still preparing us. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord, to be patient, yes. to be hungry for righteousness, to seek your face, not your hand, your yes. face. And Lord, for us to be willing and open and ready yes. to be dispatched, to be deployed, mm -hmm. to be set forth. Not for our glory, but for your glory. Yes. Not for our agenda, but for your purpose. Yes. Lord, there's a hurting world that's going to hell in a handbasket mm -hmm. that needs the secret weapons mm -hmm. that you have been preparing, in some cases, for years. Yes. Let it be so, Lord, that the timing And when the fullness of time was come, you sent forth your son, made of a woman, made under the law. Oh God, release your arrows, and may they hit the mark. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.